Welcome back to chapter 11, Jovian Plant Systems. <coughs> Excuse me, here's a picture of Saturn taken with the Cassini spacecraft that's around Saturn. It's been there for about eight, nine years now. Beautiful picture there. It's kind of a long chapter, so we'll make this about 25, 30 minute long lecture here. So in this section, we're going to learn what Jovian planets are like and what Jovian planets are like on the inside, what the weather is like on Jovian planets, and do Jovian planets have magnetospheres like Earth's? And of course, Jovian planets are the big gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So are they all alike? Here's Jupiter, the biggest one, and Saturn with its rings. They all have rings, except Saturn's are more prominent. Uranus and Neptune are more like ice giants. So Jupiter and Saturn have mostly, mostly hydrogen and helium gas in them. Uranus and Neptune have some of the hydrogen compounds and some water. They're blue because of the methane and ammonia in their atmospheres and do have some hydrogen, helium, and some rock and ice in the core. Densities of these planets, you can see here that uh, they're all pretty low density. Earth is 5.5 and these are uh, between oh, 0.7 and 1.5. Notice that Saturn actually has a density less than one. The density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. And so if you had a bathtub big enough, you could actually put Saturn inside of it and it would float in water. So the planets, these Jovian planets are not quite spherical. They do have uh, radiation. Uh, they're, excuse me, they're, they're spherical because of their rapid rotation. They spin so fast in about 12 or 10 hours that they actually have a bulge in the middle of their orbit. So on the inside, we have visible clouds. We have uh, hydrogen in gaseous form, liquid form, and then metallic form. In the middle of some of these, we also have a core that could be rocks and minerals, metals, and ice. So there is no solid surface to the Jovian planets. The layers are under high pressure and temperatures. The cores, about 10 Earth masses made of hydrogen compounds, metals, and rock. And the layers are different for the different planets. And why is that? Well, there's high pressure inside Jupiter. causes the phase of hydrogen to change within depth. It goes from a gas to a liquid to a metallic hydrogen. And hydrogen acts like a metal at great depth because the electrons move freely inside of it. So the core of Jupiter is thought to be made of rock, metals, and hydrogen compounds. And the core is about the size as Earth, but 10 times more massive. And so our model suggests that the cores of the Jovian planets have similar compositions. Lower pressures inside Uranus and Neptune, being smaller planets, mean no metallic hydrogen inside of them. Now, Jupiter is still cooling off from the formation of it four and a half billion years ago, it radiates twice as much energy as it receives from the sun. And the energy probably comes from slow contraction of the interior, releasing potential energy. Well, Saturn also radiates twice as much energy as it receives from the sun, so it's still cooling off. The energy probably comes from helium rain inside of it. Neptune emits nearly twice as much energy as it receives also, but the source of that energy remains unknown, a mysterious mystery. So what is the weather like on the Jovian planets? We have the largest hurricane in the solar system on Jupiter, the Great Red Spot. In Jupiter's atmosphere, the hydrogen compounds form clouds, and different cloud layers correspond to freezing points of different hydrogen compounds. And a while back, we sent a probe called Galileo to Jupiter, and it had an atmospheric probe that probed the atmosphere down to about 60 miles inside of it. Other Jovian planets have cloud layers similar to Jupiter's, but different compounds make clouds of different colors. <clears throat> In Jupiter, we have a lot of reds, whites, and blues, and oranges. These are from ammonium sulfide clouds that have the red and brown color. Ammonia, the highest, coldest layer, reflects white light. On Saturn, the colors, the layers are similar, but deeper and farther from the sun, so they're more subdued. The blue on Uranus and Neptune comes from methane. The methane gas in Neptune and Uranus absorbs red light but transmits blue light. And the blue light reflects off methane clouds making those planets look blue. Now we have these belts and zones on Jupiter, these band of clouds. 
this is from different layers in the atmosphere. And then the great red spot you've heard of about Jupiter is a storm, a low pressure area. Uh, this is a wrong diagram. It's actually a low pressure area, not high pressure. It's a storm twice as wide as Earth and has existed for at least, well, now we would like to say four centuries. Really, Galileo saw it in 1610. All the Jovian planets have strong winds and storms. Uh, Saturn has a very weird storm at its poles. It's, it looks like a hexagon, and we have absolutely no clue how you form a hexagon out of a gaseous cloud. Well, do the Jovian planets have magnetic fields like Earth does? Do they have auroras? And the answer is yes. They have very strong magnetic fields. Jupiter's strong magnetic field gives it an enormous magnetosphere. The gases escaping Io, a moon of it, feed the donut shaped Io Taurus, which is a torus, like a donut of charged particles that goes around Jupiter's magnetosphere. All the Jovian planets have substantial magnetospheres, but Jupiter's is by far the largest because it's the largest, most massive planet in the solar system. So what we learned are all Jovian planets alike. Well, Jupiter and Saturn are mostly hydrogen and helium gas, and Uranus and Neptune are mostly hydrogen compounds with some methane and ammonia. On the inside, the layered interiors with very high pressure and cores made of rock, metals, and hydrogen compounds, and the very high pressure in Jupiter and Saturn can produce metallic hydrogen. The multiple cloud layers determine colors of Jovian planets, and they all have strong storms and winds. All of them have substantial magnetic fields, and Jupiter's is by far the largest, and they all have auroras. Let's look at the satellites, the moons of these planets. The Jovian planets have many moons. Here are the Galilean moons of Jupiter. We have Io, which is a volcanic moon that spews out sulfuric ash. Europa, an icy moon with a saltwater ocean underneath a 60 mile thick layer of ice and few craters. Ganymede, one of the largest moons, and Callisto, an ice giant moon, lots of craters and ice. So the small moons have no geological activity. The medium-sized moons had geological activity in the past, and the larger moons do have ongoing geological activity. These moons have uh, enough self-gravity to be spherical. They have a lot of ice. They're formed in orbit around the Jovian planets, and some of them are captured asteroids. Excuse me. Circular orbits in the same direction as the planet rotation. The small moons are usually captured asteroids and don't have enough gravity to be spherical, so they tend to be kind of potato shaped. Captured asteroids or comets, and their orbits do not follow the usual patterns. So, why are Jupiter's Galilean moons so geologically active? Io is the most volcanic activity active body in the solar system, but why is it so? It's really because those volcanic eruptions continue to change Io's surface because Io actually expands and contracts by about six miles every time it orbits uh, Jupiter every two and a half days. And that internal pressure of, of these earthquakes on Io sque squeezing that plant down, compressing it, spews out that ash. So it's squished and stretched around its orbit, and its orbit is very elliptical. Europa's ocean may be a water world. We like to send a spacecraft there and dig down through there. We have found ice channels and grooves where water seeps up through these cracks in, in Europa's surface and resurface the, the moon. Very cool. Europa also has an interior that's warm by tidal heating from Jupiter. And so we do believe it is a saltwater ocean. And what do we say about water? Where there's water, there's life. So could there be life on Jupiter's moon Europa? We don't know yet. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. Clear evidence of geological activity. And tidal heating plus the heat from radioactive decay helps run that. Callisto is a classic cratered ice ball, icy surface, no tidal heating. But it does have a magnetic field. 
Titan is the largest moon of Saturn. Actually has a very thick atmosphere. The only moon to do so. It consists of mostly nitrogen with some argon, methane, and ethane. In fact, we landed a spacecraft called the Huygens probe out of the Cassini spacecraft a number of years ago, about eight or nine years ago. We landed it on a muddy beach of methane uh, near a methane lake. The surface of Titan, this probe Huygens landed in 2005, found liquid methane and rocks made of ice. And that last picture on the left shows the ice boulders that was found on the beach. Really cool mission that I was uh, thrilled to be a part of during that time. The medium-sized moons of Saturn, Mimas, looks like the Death Star, don't it? Uh, almost all of them show evidence of past volcanism and or tectonics. There are ice fountains on Enceladus, suggesting it may have a subsurface ocean as well, which may also have life there too. So imagine a moon with ice volcanoes. How cool is that? Iapetus has a curious ridge across much of its equator. We don't know why. And it has very white and very dark areas. The light areas are as white as snow and the dark areas as dark as coal. Some of the moons around Uranus, like Miranda, has a large tectonic features and few craters. Maybe an episode of a impact in the past. Actually, some of the interior of Miranda has actually now come to the exterior and recoalesced. Neptune's moon Triton is very unique. It has a cantaloupe type terrain, some frost deposits, and we know it has nitrogen geysers on it, which is very odd because this is a moon that's 4 billion miles away from the sun, yet we have found nitrogen geysers. And these wind streaks coming out of the geysers as the debris blows downwind. Similar to Pluto, but larger with evidence of past geological activity. So why are the small icy moons more geologically active than the small rocky planets? Well, rock melts at higher temperatures. and Only large rocky planets have enough heat for that activity. Ice, however, melts at much lower temperatures, and the tidal heating of Jupiter and Saturn can melt the internal ice, driving the activity. So we now know moons come in many sizes. The level of geological activity depends on a moon's size. Tidal heating drives geological activity, leading to Io's volcanoes and the ice geology on other moons. Titan is the only moon with a thick atmosphere. Many of the other major moons show shines of geological activity. And we know that the ice melts and deforms at lower temperatures, enabling tidal heating to drive activity. We've talked about the planets themselves, and we've talked about the moons now. Let's get into the rings around these planets. What are Saturn's rings like, and how do the Jovian ring systems compare to Saturn's? And why do all the Jovian planets even have rings to begin with? So here's an older picture taken from the 70s of Saturn's rings. You notice the gap in the ring. And it's not a uh, solid object. They, these are just fragments of ice and rock and dirt floating around in an orbit. And that gap there is called the Cassini Division after the astronomer Cassini and the spacecraft named after him. So they are numerous tiny individual particles that orbit around Saturn's equator and it's very thin. So this is an Earth-based view of Saturn. And we see the Cassini division there. Spacecraft view of Saturn's rings from the Cassini spacecraft. Uh, it's been there for a number of years. So individual gaps of the rings separated by narrow gaps. Are these conceptions of particles in the ring system? What they might look like? And then we have these gap moons. These individual very small moons inside of gaps within the... Uh, the rings themselves. And then we have these other moons called shepherd moons, which help kind of keep the rings in orbit. We see resonance gaps. These are orbital resonances with a large moon that can also produce a gap. <coughs> Excuse me. How do the other rings of the other Jovian planets compare to Saturn's? Well, they all have ring systems, but they're smaller and darker patterns than Saturn has. But why do they have rings? 
They formed from the dust, created impacts on the moons orbiting these planets. How do we know this? Well, the rings are not left over from planet formation because the particles are too small to have survived for so long. So there must be a continuous replacement of tiny particles and the most likely source of impacts with the Jovian moons. The Jovian planets all have rings because they're, they possess many small moons close in and there are impacts on these moons that are random. Saturn's incredible rings may be an accident of our own time. So we know that these rings around Saturn are made up of countless individual ice particles. They're extremely thin with many gaps. The other Jovian planets have much fainter ring systems with smaller, darker, less numerous particles. And the ring particles are probably debris from moons.